special thanks to these companies for being long-term partners of this channel. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Zach. I'm here with Grant who runs Arkansas Off-Road. What's up guys? It's a YouTube channel and he's got this awesome Tacoma. Now we're not gonna do a stereotypical walk around of his rig because you can find plenty of information about it on his channel. But being that I've had the opportunity to meet him and kind of talk to him a bit, we're gonna just go through some of his modifications and ask him really why he chose them and why maybe he worked with specific brands because I think it's important to understand the methodology for choosing a modification, not just what modifications are like best to someone and that's what they run on their truck. Actually understanding exactly. the why of why they have those modifications is really important so you can make those important decisions. So yeah, what we're gonna it. do is just kind of go around the truck, hit some of the big decisions and uh, that'll be that. So if you like what I'm doing with the channel, or you like his channel, consider subscribing to both of ours. Grant is an awesome dude and uh, you know, support us both. That'd be awesome, so. Thanks man, appreciate it. First of all, you know, the biggest statement on here and obviously you work with Backwoods some. Yeah. Um, you know, what, why are your bumpers different than others? And you know, why are you passionate about the company that you work for and yeah. what, you, what do you think really sets your bumpers apart? Yeah, great question. So the biggest point of contention with bumpers everywhere is the weight is uh, aluminum or steel. So what I like about Backwoods is they've done this with their Vans uh, products for a long time. Um, and I was actually kind of brought on to help with the Toyota stuff. So um, they do a true hybrid. So that's aluminum shell. And we'll, we'll kind of maybe show it maybe later in its raw form over there. But aluminum exterior shell with a steel um, winch uh, cradle inside. So you put the uh, winch cradle on the truck and that only weighs 54 pounds, super light for steel. You throw the winch on and then you throw the entire outer aluminum shell on it. So you're looking at like an 85 pound bumper or something like that for this entire setup. So you don't have to change right. out like your suspension, you know, you get an all steel bumper or whatever, it kind of right. sags. So um, tons of strength uh, from like the recovery points that are steel and stuff, but uh, you're saving weight everywhere you can. Right. So in you know, this is definitely an aluminum shell. Would you say mm -hmm. this maybe isn't necessarily the perfect choice if you have like a real knack for doing rock crawling, right? Like if yeah. you're if you're constantly yeah. hitting this bumper, you know, there may mm -hmm. be a need for having a full steel bumper. Like 100%. this, this might be for the person who wheels wants protection, but doesn't necessarily need like bulletproof protection every time they go exactly. on the trail. Exactly, yeah, right? this is our o like true overland bumper. Right. So, I mean, most of the time you're doing long trips, you know, then you get on the trail. So right. this is like that perfect in the middle, in between. In the middle, yeah. yeah. So almost so. like a, you know, you're hitting forest roads for most of the way, but then you mm -hmm. want to do a technical trail, you still have yeah. all of that protection. So, yep. okay. Yeah, we've had customers that Very have cool. hit cars and deer and it's, it's held up really well still. I see. Yeah, yeah. I was just kind of curious to like, you know, compare, because at the end of the day, there still probably is some benefits to having a full steel bumper. Yeah, of course. There you really know, is. there's trade-offs to both mm -hmm. things. Obviously steel is heavier and aluminum mm -hmm. is lighter, but maybe not quite as strong. But yeah, it just depends what you're doing. That's all it boils right. down to. Right, yeah, so, and then you've got lights. You have a lot of kind mm -hmm. of these similar Pathfinder lights. Yeah. Why did you choose these lights versus maybe some of the others like Baja, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. rigid? KC, so, diode. So, yeah, I mean, there's, first of all, there's like tons out there, different budgets, different outputs, all that kind of stuff. Um, so this is actually our brand um, that we've, we've been kind of developing this on the side. Um, primarily our bumpers is our thing, but right. um, man, these are like that sweet spot price point and value between like a Baja and like something pretty basic, right? So this is uh, kind of for the customer who just is budget friendly and just wants a pretty decent light. So these are our newest uh, Prowler series that are a true amber LED chip with the true amber um, lens. So okay. nice. uh, we got these in clear and amber, but they're just they're just solid light, man. They're Sweet. not they're not too bad. I didn't know that you guys is like this was a different like venture of Backwoods. Yeah, so basically yeah. It's, it's like our, one of your own lighting lines. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, it's our okay. thing. Um, we don't I mean, like I said, most of our focus is on the bumpers, but right. when people buy bumpers, what do they get next? Lights and winches and stuff. Right. So Right. Um, okay, cool. It's an easy so, win for us. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, would you say you're more of kind of a weekend trips and then occasionally a couple week trips throughout the year, maybe like most people are just kinda 
they have a nine to five, but they try to spend a lot of their vacation time, you know, doing trips. Is that kind of like what you typically do? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. And then a couple times a year, I'll do like a big extended trip. Okay. But uh, I still run my truck pretty hard and, you know, I do some tough trails on it. Right. But I still got to go to work Monday morning, you know? So, right. Yeah. yeah. So I guess the biggest reason I was asking that is because <clears throat> just to kind of set it up for like the time periods you use your truck, because mm -hmm. like, for example, if we talk about your electrical system or we talk about your camping setup, it's good to kind of have that frame of reference to know like, you yeah. know, you've chosen these things because you do that, you know, style of length of trip rather mm -hmm. than being someone who lives full time out of their truck or yeah, something. Yeah, that's so. a completely b different build altogether if you're you know, right. living out of it, so. Right, yeah, so you wanna just talk a little bit about your electrical system? Like, mm -hmm. you know, you chose this uh, solar panel here, but you've also got solar up there. Like, yeah. you know, maybe why do you have so much solar? Mm -hmm. And also like once you talk a little bit about the solar, mm -hmm. just talk a little bit more about, you know, how you've ran all your accessories off one battery. I think some people get in their head that if they're gonna get a lot of lights or they have stuff in the back that they instantly need a dual battery. So yeah. I know you just talking through some of those details may kind of flesh out, you know, why that's yeah. not necessarily the you know, perfect route to go. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, like to me, like lighting and wiring is intimidating. It just really is. Um, I, I'm a DIY guy. Like I can do a lot of bolt-ons and, mm -hmm. you know, axle work or whatever, but like that is kind of out of my realm. So I kept it simple kind of on purpose. So yeah, I have all my lights wired to just a single battery. I don't do a dual battery, at least right now. I don't have a need for it. Right. Um, and I just keep it, I'll kind of show you maybe the, the Garmin little system I have in there to manage some of that. But yeah. it's just the regular truck battery and I use those little portable batteries for um, other things. In the yeah, back. like the so fridge and electronics the fridge, yeah. and stuff. Yeah, that's Charging sweet. the phone, yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. And the, the solar. So this panel I have wired directly to the truck. So it keeps the, the truck topped off. Uh, all the time. The uh, other solar panel up top, um, that one runs to my EcoFlow portable batteries. So that keeps the accessories that aren't wired to the truck charged. Mm -hmm. So I kind of split them like that. Right, and are the, what's the wattage on that? That one's solar? like 186 okay. watts, I believe, and I think this is uh, either 80 or 90, something okay. like that. Nice, so, that's awesome. Yeah, they're really awesome. Free energy, man. That's yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Keeps you topped off when you're just parked there that's and right. not yeah. driving around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just kind of talk us a little bit through, you know, the wheel and tire setup you have. If you've had different setups in the past and why you've changed to this, yeah. you know, previous setups you've had on your suspension and mm -hmm. why you've changed to that too. Because I know you've got a lot of history that you probably have good you yeah. know, wisdom on why certain things have worked and haven't worked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. So I guess I'll start um, on the wheels and tires. So I had 285 70 17s, uh, Falcon Wild Peaks, great tire. Um, but I needed something just super meaty for the Ozarks where I live, there's a bunch of mud, bunch of rocks. And uh, I mean, if you're kind of out west or something like that, maybe you don't need an MT, but just wherever your environment kind of has the trails right, you, you just need to pick based off of the trails that are around. Do you there, guys so. get much snow or not a whole lot of snow? I, man, it depends. Does it stick um, around? It's this past year, it's kind of stuck a little bit. Okay. Um, mud trains suck in the snow. <laughs> They're just not good at all. Yeah. But uh, it's it's rare enough to where an MT is, is fine even for my daily. I see. But okay. uh, yeah, awesome. I, I made the jump to 35s recently um, and I love it. And I had to do a lot to get there, but we'll, maybe we'll get to that later. But <laughs> um, so yeah, so these are the 315s, 75s, 16s. Um, and I, I like a 16 inch wheel. It's just a smaller wheel with a bigger sidewall just looks a little i don't know proportional to me i kind of yeah. like it meteor um yeah so i went from um a first wheel and tire setup to uh 34ers and i went to the km3s okay love those tires i have a review on my channel about all this stuff um and i had the aev crestone wheels and those were like those were like 40 pound wheels Whoa. so those were like insanely heavy wow. i loved them they're really <laughs> tough and everything but I changed them out and I saved weight going bigger. Like wow. with bigger tires, bigger wheels, I, I saved 70 crazy. pounds overall. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so that was a big deciding factor. So that's wheels and tires. Um, okay. Suspension, so uh, I actually just did a video on this as well, but yep. uh, I had Kings. I had an earlier version of Kings that weren't adjustable. Um, they, were, they came with the truck when I bought it, which was a really cool win. That is nice, yeah. yeah. Uh, but they were kind of tired. They needed a refresh. The, the hoses were kind of just worn. Um, needed some new oil and stuff. So uh, I didn't want to do the rebuild process. I, you know, factored in all the money and time it would take to do that. So a lot of my buddies been running Dobbison stuff. I have the, the Dobbison leaf springs in the rear. 
wanted to give them a shot and uh, started learning a lot about the MRRs and holy cow, like yeah. they're awesome. Yeah. Uh, all the internal seals they have um, compared to Kings and other stuff out there, their hoses, their fittings, like super high quality um, and you know, from Australia. So those, those boys know what they're doing. <laughs> they so. know what they're doing. Yeah. They beat their stuff up over there. <laughs> That's right. And then I even asked the guy, a rep, uh, you know, when do I need to rebuild these? And he's like, we don't really know. And yeah. I was like, are you serious? So. He's like, we've been running ours for three and a half years and no problems, they're perfect. And he's like, if you do need to rebuild them eventually, they're super easy. So that's what sold me on the Dobbsons. Yeah, I was pretty stoked about that too. So yeah. it's pretty funny. You know, a lot of you have probably seen the videos on my channel where I did the install. Grant and I upgraded like without talking to each other yes. at all, almost like the same exact weekend. So I'd seen some of his like Instagram stories and reached out to him. So mm -hmm. it was kind of funny, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, the rebuild period being kind of dynamic, depending upon how you drive your truck right. is super awesome. Cause yeah. rebuilding is kind of a hassle sometimes. Yeah, and, you won't have a truck if you send yeah. them off, you know? Or if you get like a whole second set, then that's a lot of money. So yeah, yeah. Kidding. either way it's, it's gonna take some of your time and money to probably figure out how to rebuild. So yeah. doing it less often is probably better than not. Yeah, so. whatever's less maintenance, I'm, I'm down for it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, all right, well, let's move back to the, yeah. just your bed setup. I don't wanna make this video too long, but yeah. I just wanna talk about, um, you know, how you've probably gone through iterations of this. I know a lot of truck guys, they change yeah. how they set up their bed system. Um, you know, what have you ran in the past and how has it kind of evolved over mm -hmm. the, you know, last couple of years? Yeah. So when I bought the truck, it had this camper shell on it. And as soon as I got it, I was like, just for whatever reason, I was like, I don't want the camper. I want to do a bed rack and whatnot. And ended up keeping this on. And boy, I'm like so glad I did it. Um, I have also a video kind of talking about the philosophy of why I kept it. But basically, it's, it's locked away all your gear in here. It doesn't get dirty and, and dusty. I basically made a forerunner, right? <laughs> like I kept the cap on and um, all your stuff's secure uh, and it's out of the weather and it's just the way to go. So I've uh, been loving this setup. Um, I have the Go Fast Camper Super Light up here, like 80 pound tent is awesome. I absolutely love their stuff. Um, so my next iteration next week, I kind of talked to you about it, but I'm, yeah. I'm doing the full Go Fast Camper V2. Um, so I got everything kind of ready for that in here and that follows the same principle of a camper shell right it's got right. access on the doors um, and that's another huge thing is if you if you don't have access you can't get your stuff in here it's like yeah. you got to crawl through the swing out you got to grab right. stuff so like doors like this are just Go for game the goal wing yeah the goal wing for sure yeah cool yeah. let's what, might as well just swing around back here yeah sure we can open this up and you can kind of mm -hmm. show us some of the stuff going on in here yeah so this is our uh, high clearance dual swing out um, our backwoods high cl uh, bumper um, so like I said, on the front bumper, we do steel and aluminum um, all together. So the entire bottom portion of the bumper is steel. And then the, uh, the two individual swinging doors are aluminum. So it's one of the lightest high clearance dual swings out there. Uh, Cause a lot of people just use steel or whatever. So uh, we love the weight savings and right. you know, you can drill into it and add all this stuff on it. I have like a jerry holder chainsaw all kinds of cool stuff so. yeah so you got like a little drop down yeah a little walmart too. made uh <laughs> that's awesome table i love that but yeah this this bumper is so cool i've been testing this for about a year with backwoods like it has been a long time and uh yeah we're digging it but that's sweet yeah here's kind of the camper setup um that has also been through quite a few iterations so i've changed everything multiple times and finally dialed it in that's that's the thing you got to go out there and figure out what works and what doesn't so you have a lot of things in your truck that probably full-timers would have in their truck you know you've mm -hmm. got a sweet fridge you've got power systems you've even got a coffee maker up there yeah. like you've got tons of awesome features in here mm -hmm. and it's really rigged out and efficiently stored you know you said when we were just chatting the or other day that you just love having everything like super organized yeah, and super OCD. It's all got its nice little place. Yeah. And you know, did your build start out this way? Like how long did you wheel before you had some of this stuff? You know, do you find that there's a fair amount of stuff in here you don't actually use? Mm -hmm. Like great question. You know, yeah. What do you seem to use like on a weekend basis versus stuff you just keep in here because you have to store it somewhere and you only use it on your week long trips, yeah. you know? So a lot of this stuff isn't necessarily just for me, like it's for other people too. 
like you know if they're missing a radio or you know a newbie needs some gear or whatever like i'm that guy to give it to him right so right that's a lot of that stuff is for that now when i had the tj i had a jeep tj that started my youtube channel with that so if you guys know what a, a tj is it's a two wheel or two door uh jeep super short super small uh you had to be very space conscious of every square inch you had to like <laughs> you know make sure everything fit in its place and I'm a detail-oriented guy, so like I kind of started that way, right? I, I took that Jeep out and learned from that. Right. Um, so got pretty good at that and um, dialed everything in. Then I got this, and that carried over to the truck. And what I like about the Tacoma, and we talked about this, is like how many different you know setups can you do on a Tacoma, right? The right. bed is so versatile. So a lot of the gear in here, I definitely use it. I wouldn't put it in here if I haven't used it before or needed it, um, like a chainsaw. Oh my gosh, how many trails have I gone down where there's <laughs> been a storm the day before and you know, we've used other people have had it and I was like, oh my gosh, I gotta have that in the woods. So got right. that, right? There's a shower, you know, I've been nasty and disgusting. So like <laughs> you, you go out and you experience what you need and then you put it on there. Yeah. Um, but really I use, it depends on the trip too, like the length of the trip. If you're going like a week long, you don't need, you know, the kitchen sink, right? If you right. a couple days, a weekend, you can get by with just about anything. Yeah. And I think the other thing is like, in general, I feel like people will get in this mindset where they kind of knock the guys that have so much stuff in their truck, but yeah. they like don't do long trips or they don't like maybe even use a lot of the stuff, but mm -hmm. it kind of comes down to, I think the like underlying habit we all have of being like ridiculously overprepared yeah. because either we've had an experience or we know someone who has where they didn't have something mm -hmm. and it just completely ruined their experience and it wasn't enjoyable. And so then they're like never gonna leave home without something. And yeah. so I feel like a lot of times too, we carry along a bunch of junk or or really nice gear, you know, a whole spectrum of gear. And we probably don't ever even use it. But so, like, so true. There's, a, there's that one time where you have everything you need and you're like, man, thankfully I had all that in my mm -hmm. truck. So I was ready to go. Yeah. So. And weather plays a huge factor. Right. Like if it's pouring down, like you can't expect perfect weather, right? You got to prepare for every single scenario. The coffee maker, that is way excessive. Like <laughs> <laughs> I have like other ways to make coffee. That's just a little, tiny little thing, but yeah, I don't That's know. Easy, it's got to be a show rig sometimes, right? Right. Well, I mean, you're able to probably make more coffee than like some of the other ways. For other people, right? Yeah. You're, yeah. you're making coffee for the whole crew. Yeah. So. Right. Yeah, well, this is sweet. I think yeah, uh, thanks. I think we've basically covered everything. Um, thanks for kind of just talking about some yeah, of the, the whys behind some of your gear because, mm -hmm. um, you know, probably all of you have watched his channel before I even started mine. So I kind of wanted to just use this time to be able to pick his brain a bit, talk through his mods and why he chose them because you all probably know what he's running. But, you know, to l take a little bit more time to learn about why he's running them, I think is important because- Yeah, I make mean, inform informed decisions. Exactly, yeah. and like my rig isn't quite as built out as his, but it still takes me 20 minutes to walk around my truck and talk about everything I have, exactly. let alone why I've picked it. You know, half my videos on my channel are the why of how I've picked stuff. So, mm -hmm. you know, just taking the time to pick your brain a little bit. Yeah. I appreciate it. So. Yeah, I appreciate you, man. Thanks for Thanks, Zach. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> showing us around and- cool. Go subscribe to his channel yeah. and you probably already do but if you don't <laughs> go check it out so, thanks guys yeah thanks for watching i'll catch you all in the next video